So around three months ago, I got a call from Kevin saying, let's buy a van in South America. <laughs> I said, okay. We've done half a dozen cross-country road trips, yeah. uh, including Canada. We've driven across Mexico. We've all driven across uh, Iceland and around Iceland. So the best way to travel South America was just by van. It's the best way to see places. You can control sunrise, sunset, the duration you're at places. You don't have to deal with a tour bus of 50 people. You have no limitations whatsoever, and especially with this thing, you can sleep in the back of it, which it's not a, it's not beautiful, it's not pretty, but it gets us around. And it's stealthy. Yeah, which and it's is a major extremely stealthy. Yeah. So uh, a few months back, I went to New Zealand, and I met up with some homies who bought a van in New Zealand. And first thought that came to mind for this trip was, oh, I got to mess. There's a bug in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> First thought of that was I got to message them um, to see how they did it. Like, because when you think of that from a third person view, like, it just sounds so crazy. Like, how do you even begin that? Um, and they just told me Facebook groups, pretty much. Yeah, so the next thing, we are joining Overlanding in South America Facebook group. Um, there's a bunch of stuff on there. People trying to sell their cars, their vans, their campers, motorcycles, just all of this miscellaneous stuff including stoves for a van all the stuff that's useful for overlanding a country so next thing you know we're members of this group and to first off to join these groups you have to request them which takes up to 24 48 hours you have to put your name why you want to join every every single one has different survey questions they're pretty easy it's just they don't want any people just doing promotions or advertisements it's strictly for people overlanding um, which is super cool because every post is either valuable information, uh, news, like stuff like protests and border crossings being closed, and people buying and selling. To be completely honest, I don't think this trip could have been done without this Facebook group. There's been so much useful information coming from it, and this is where we responded to the post of a man selling this van. So, first things first, we bought this van for 2000 US dollars. All in all, excellent price. It's less than a rental car for three weeks down in South America. Um, our first thought was we were going to try to contact a local car dealership, but then the more we thought, we didn't think that was the greatest idea. <laughs> so we did it from Overlanding South America's Facebook group. So in this Facebook group, there's people selling little sedans, minivans, sprinter vans, RVs, converted school buses, all sorts of stuff. With the price point being about from this two thousand dollars to I think like sixty thousand, sixty, yeah, like definitely. huge range, and you never get to meet these people or see the van in person before you go unless you're already backpacking, which was not the case for us. Um, I was out traveling and we didn't even have much communication before this trip. To be honest, I had a really busy two months, um, but we we weren't going to buy anything expensive. To be honest, like Bree said. If it lasts two and a half to three weeks, it's the same cost of a rental car. And we were extremely confident and every, that everything checked out. We trust the, the person who we bought from. We we're like, you know what? Like this will definitely last three weeks. If they're super confident, it'll last us all the way from Santiago down to Ushuaia and all the way back up to Colombia. So like three weeks, we'll get our money's worth. Best case scenario, we will get the van for as many months as we're down here, which could be four, could be six, could be eight. We have no idea. Um, so it's like a huge piece of crap, something on, on this <laughs> side, every time I turn just clunks around, something in this back right thing, which I still haven't seen, but a mechanic and Bree did. Apparently there's some like a fire extinguisher or some box or something. And at first we were like, there's no way there's a box making all this noise, but something just clanking around. Yeah. Um, it, it's falling apart, there's noises everywhere. So it's a piece of crap, but it's been two weeks, mm -hmm. I think officially two weeks now. Um, we're still rolling. We're still rolling. So we got one week left uh, to get our money's worth. <laughs> and then honestly, everything else is just, I don't know, best case scenario. So it's a piece of crap, but it's the best piece of crap we've ever bought. And it's going to last us as long as it lasts us. We have no idea. So inherently, we did not want to just give this guy $2,000 right off the bat. We never met him, seen the van. We don't even know if it's a legit thing. After all, buying a van in South America from someone you've never met or never seen sounds kind of crazy. We agree. So it sounds insane. 
So, Kevin and the seller of the van decided on a gentleman's agreement and we'll put down 10% of the van and the rest we'll pay when we saw him. And that's and exactly what we did. For that deal, it was he was going to take his car off the market and unofficially it was ours. Um, and in that case, he knew that he had us coming in and we were going to buy the car. It just kind of locked it in for us, but also locked it in for him. So it was mutually beneficial. Mm -hmm. And we agreed that we were going to fly into Santiago and that's where they were going to have the van at. And that's where we met. And he picked us up from the airport in this. Yeah. Um, um, so we just agreed on the time frame. We flew down here November 1st because that was about when they were trying to leave. Um, so we had to agree on the time and the date, which it was pretty painless. I mean, November 1st in Santiago worked out for both parties. It saved us money from flying into Patagonia and there's a few spots up there we wanted to see. Um, and the city was cool. It was kind of hectic while we were there and adjusting was crazy. Mm -hmm. But um, it was cool and I'm glad we did Santiago opposed to Patagonia kind of because like the build up as well. So advice to buying a van like we did, um, just ask for lots of photos, details on the van. Stuff like that. Maintenance reports. He agreed to go to a mechanic with us after we got there, which was very helpful. It was kind of a tedious, long day at the shop. Um, Hours. It was very, very <laughs> worth it, yeah. in my opinion. Um, so yeah, it was just kind of comforting knowing that the brakes weren't going to go out. As and it, it was a third-party mechanic too. It wasn't a friend yeah. of his. Wasn't a friend of ours. So. Even though we don't understand Spanish and the mechanic was mostly Spanish speaking, it's pretty easy to pick up a vibe of like if things are actually okay or if they're like dangerously bad and like you're not going to make it. Um, so I don't know. We didn't have any bad vibes at the mechanic. I mean, we knew it had some issues, but no like serious yeah. problems. Yeah, it was totally fine. Definitely recommend doing that. Um, we found this mechanic on iOverlander, which we will get to in a later video. And the last step, to be honest, was coming down here and he wanted the remainder in cash because I think they're from Spain, no, 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 they're from Peru, lived in Spain, and then got residency in Canada. So the whole international payments thing was all over the place. Um, so it, it was fine, it was no trouble off our back. We pulled out 1800 when we came down here, gave it to him right away. So as he just said, we're Americans driving a car from British Columbia, which we purchased in Santiago, Chile. And now we're in Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> um, a few things to note is Jorge made the process super painless. We do not officially own this car. We, I own the car, but it is under his name. Reason being, because it is British Columbia plated, you have to do the transaction with Jorge, myself, in British Columbia at, I don't remember the name of the office, but all the parties need to be present, which was not possible with my travel schedule. It wasn't possible for them. It was, would have been very expensive. Um, so the way that we are driving this van is through a Poder with an apostille, which is the Poder Jorge grants me full access to do whatever I want with this car for as long as I want. And then Jorge and I talked and we agreed, you know, if, if we drive this van back to Canada, um, we can do the official trade there and then it'll be in my name and everything. But to be honest, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, so we're under a Poder and the apostille is what allows the Poder to be international because some border crossings, they're supposed to let you go on just a Poder, but sometimes there's issues. So the apostille allows you to freely go through all of these countries. Um, and other than that, we have the vehicle registration, which is attached to the vehicle insurance, the Poder, the apostille, our passport, and maintenance records that he thankfully gave us. But oh, and something a, called a TIP, which is a temporary T import permit for a vehicle. And we were so confused by all of this in the beginning, but you get that when you cross a border. So we just gave ours back to Chile and we, go, we went to the Argentina border and we got a new one from Argentina issued. It didn't cost us anything. So none of the paperwork really cost anything. I think the Poder was 20 US dollars. Uh, the Apostille, I don't think cost anything. The TIP, you get registered every country you drive into. So it was a pretty, pretty painless process. It seems crazy and so complicated and horrible, but it, it really not. And Kevin and Jorge, when we flew into Santiago, they were at the airport and what did you do there? So normally what you would do, so he had to end his TIP and I had to begin mine. 
and you'd normally do this at a border, but to avoid us having to drive to the border just for this, um, in the airport, at Santiago Airport, at the arrivals, there's a door directly to the right of when you get out of arrivals. It's right under an escalator, and you go in there, and essentially, Jorge ended his TIP, and I started mine, and that was only for Chile, and then I, we were there for roughly two weeks, and then, like we said, every time you drive to a new country, you get issued a new one for that country. Anyways, hope this video was helpful and informative for you guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Sounds a lot more complicated than it is. Hit us up if you need any questions answered, stuff like that. And pretty much the best way to learn is to do it. Absolutely.